Hey everybody out in internet land. Today I'm turning a small ambrosia maple bowl. It's a pretty neat bowl. Um, I've had this piece of wood drying for quite a while and uh, over the summer it got pretty hot in my shop so a lot of my bowls ended up uh, losing a lot of moisture even though it had that anchor seal on it. A lot of times when I'm turning my bowls, I really don't spend a lot of time um, making the blanks into rounds. I find it's pretty easy just to uh, kind of go from the back and turn them. So kind of my first step is normally just to make it roundish. And you can see some of that ambrosia pattern in the green starting to reveal itself. I really do enjoy using this uh, 5 8 bowl gouge. Um, Packard Tools has been a great place uh, for me to buy a lot of my uh, bowl gouges and other tools that I use. Even though that I'm still kind of roughing it out at this point, I try to practice a lot of very smooth um, passes. Um, I've been playing a game with myself, seeing how smooth I can get the uh, the edge um, when I'm turning. You might have seen that I did have some grain tear out, um, and that's okay. Well, my final pass, I usually make sure that my my gouge is razor sharp. Um, right now I'm just checking to see if it's all round. So, yep, here I go. I love my Wolverine jig for my, my grinds. I usually end up, I think, I think I sharpen typically about one or two times when I'm turning, depending on how hard the wood is, but this is maple, so it's, it's okay. Right now I'm checking to see about grain tear out. You can see I'm taking a really kind of nice planned out pass. Up until now it's just about getting it to a rounded shape. Um, here's really when I start to think about what I think the vessel is going to be. And I start working on kind of refining that shape. With the final pass of the outside, <clears throat> I like the, the shape, um, but I kind of felt like I wanted to put something kind of on the bottom. Almost reminds me of like a teapot or a teacup, I mean, and uh, or a flower pot maybe. Uh, just something basic. It's already had a neat pattern with the ambrosia stuff. Now I'm just marking the bottom to put a little recess so my jaws can go in there. Because my jaws have an angle to them, I like taking my parting tool and kind of setting that in there so that way I know one, the depth that I'm going, 
but also um, so that way I know my angles right. I usually take my uh, scraping tool and trip the face. Um, I don't know, it gives it a clean look for me to put my lines in. Um, I still like marking where I want my walls to be. Um, and here's a little tool that I made for depth. Uh, it's just a piece of wood with a little piece of metal through it and I have a screw that holds it in place. and. It's a really easy DIY depth gauge to make. You know, as I'm watching this, I can't help but wish that I really had a coring system. You waste so much of this beautiful wood just in, in scrap from taking out the center. For those of you who don't know, the coring uh, jig is really cool. It has kind of a round uh, blade that kind of goes in and you can get mini blanks and other bowls. Uh, out of a, a larger piece one day. Also, sorry guys for the, uh, the big meat hands in the way. I think for the next video, when I show the, you know, kind of inside like this, I'll move my camera. If you're new to wood turning, I really recommend taking your drill bit and, and drilling down in the center uh, to the depth you want to go. I find that it really helps uh, uh, any unfortunate coring out the bottom of your bowl mistakes. Now I'm just taking uh, some light cuts on the sides just to uh, try to get them down further. I was having trouble with the transition from the side of the bowls to the bottom. Uh, I didn't want to dig in too deep, so I decided uh, my carbide cutter would be a great choice. I definitely recommend having some carbide tip tools. Um, Definitely there's not as big of a learning curve using the carbide like cutter versus the traditional like bowl gouge. I'm almost to the right depth.
I don't know if other people do this, but like with the bottom transition, I find that I take some practice cuts before I turn it on just because I want to make sure that the tool can do what I think it should do. With the bevel grind, I had a hard time riding the bevel without digging too deep. But pretty fine shaving, so I was happy. Now my, I think my favorite part of woodworking, it's something that's just so nice about sanding. The finish for the most part is usually really nice. Um, I've been really practicing on taking that last cut uh, to get it as perfect as I can. Um, but sanding's fine. I'm just wiping on water. Um, so that way it raises the grain up and I can denib it with some uh, some sandpaper. So that's 220 and then I went all the way up to I think 400 and now I'm just applying uh, a paste wax that I made uh, made with beeswax and mineral oil. This paste wax uh, is really easy to make and it's food safe. It's just, uh, I think I used uh, like a half a cup of beeswax to about three quarters of a cup of mineral oil and put it in a double boiler till they both combined. And I also added a couple drops of um, lemongrass oil. It's supposedly antiseptic, but it just gives it a nice little smell to it. And now I'm just buffing it out. And it actually buffs to a really nice shine. Um, I think I usually put about two coats on it. Well, you can tell I'm a uh, I'm a professional camera person. Those moves were smooth, huh? So after some last second uh, hand buffing, there you go. You can see uh, the ambrosia pattern and um, it's pretty shiny. It feels really good in the hands. And here's uh, here's the final results. I love looking at that pattern. I just think it's so neat. Anyway, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you subscribe and share the video, that would be extra cool. Have a great one.